Why does Shopify have a $34 billion market cap? They've become the category kings of any company or business that wants to start selling physical product online, utilizing their e-commerce Shopify platform. So Russell and ClickFunnels, they saw this as a huge opportunity of an entire new market segment to tap into. So what they did is the biggest feature in phase two of the rollout, which is the feature rollout, is having an entirely new e-commerce store and platform, where instead of only using ClickFunnels to sell people one physical product and then upsell them more of the same thing or a complimentary product on a, on a subsequent upsell page. Now you can go and send traffic to an actual physical store that has all these different types of product categories, product SKUs, full product catalog, et cetera, that looks exactly similar to how a Shopify e-commerce site would be laid out. Now they have the ability to go after the people who love ClickFunnels more than Shopify and use ClickFunnels as funnels to drive traffic to the Shopify store, bring those people back into leaving Shopify, bring them back in the click funnels. And more importantly, go to the existing Shopify audience and the future Shopify audience and say, hey, the best way to make you sell more physical product on your e-com store is with funnels. Come over to our platform and we have the best of the both worlds now with funnels and e-com store. It's a big strategy of how they could go from you know 120,000 users to 500,000 users, just going after bringing over more people of the e-commerce market segment who are either using Shopify or going to use it in the future. And cart funnels is another big element of that. Hey, do you know how many users Shopify has? Oh, here it says, what? No way. It says they have 3 million, almost 4 million users? No way. Let's see this. 4 million is crazy if they have 4 million users. Yeah, they, yeah, they do. It says 4 million e-commerce websites. That's crazy. Uh, and I also think Shopify is ready for disruption because Shopify, although, you know, I don't know what the pricing is when you first get started, every feature you need, you need like a plugin. And it's a closed ecosystem you know, these plugins. And I heard... Right. It's like 20 apps that you need to actually make it do what you want it to do. Yeah. And you end up spending like, it's like $1,000 a month or more, right? By the time you like really build it out, right? And I heard, actually, I heard from Alex Becker from Hyros that they're now taking, I think it was like 20% of all the sales from all the apps or something like that. It was like a new thing they started doing or they want 20% of yeah all the sales it wasn't even just like from the app it was like if you're in the app store they get 20% of your business that's how he had described it I remember in a Facebook post and I was like that's crazy and basically what happens you create a monopoly and then you just do whatever you want and I you know we've been talking about this whole concept of monopolies recently on the show and I do think that Shopify is be beginning to create a monopoly of course there's many ways to make an e-commerce site there's many competitors but at 4 million users for a specifically e-commerce platform and that they can just all of a sudden say, we're gonna take 20% of all the sales from our app store, just like, or whatever percent it was, you know, just like Apple does and Google does now and so on, right? That's like, you know, that's also why I don't like the whole all-in-one platform. What happens when ClickFunnels does that? Or, you know, all of a sudden, hey, you know what? We're not 500 bucks a month anymore. We're $2,000 a month. You don't like it? You know, like, I'm not saying they're going to do that. You know, give you examples. Like, if you're all in on one platform. Competition is healthy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, right? That's why I do really like that ClickFunnels is kind of going after the Shopify thing. Plus, if you have an e-commerce site, you know, you could just download your, you know, basically like a CSV file of all your products, right? That's what you use to like upload into Google Shop and all that kind of stuff stuff. So it should be relatively simple to transition. You download your file, you upload into ClickFunnels, all your products are there. You got to rebuild maybe your, your website pages and stuff like that, right? But the page builder in ClickFunnels is, gonna, is like way more easy than building in Shopify. Oh yeah. Right? Shopify, you got to, you know, it's a full on coding, right? If you're going to, you know, if you want to customize a template. Totally. Which all the Shopify sites I've built have been, they've used code and they've used customization. And I think a lot of the, I mean, their biggest thing was like, they really leveraged the whole movement of businesses selling physical product and building businesses in the e-commerce space on the backbone of the whole influencer marketing movement. So you had the influencers create their own product on Shopify because it was super simple and easy to push their audience to merchant physical product versus creating some kind of educational based business, which expert based business which is a lot more complex, right? And then you had all of the smart physical product sellers, drop shippers who were just selling product here, sourcing them from, you know, China, Alibaba, Express, et cetera, then having them do the drop shipping model fulfillment. And then you had all of the people who were building brands on the backbone of Shopify, but didn't have the personal brand in the face. So they went to run ads and then do influencer marketing and paying influencers to either by giving them free product or by giving them some kind of referral code to give their audience to redeem on the site and or just by paying them per shout out, right? By giving them equity, they're, by giving them a rev share, there's all the different ways to do it. But it's the business paying the influencer. And previously to this, the only way the influencer would get paid is through brand deals and other brands reaching out to them and paying them to shout them out. So you have the 
this huge movement of influencers seeking out brands to get paid to actually monetize their audience and brands seeking out influencers to pay them in the different ways I just reviewed, but they were laughing all the way at the bank because they were leveraging the goodwill that influencers established to monetize their own business through the physical product sales. So what are you saying? Like you're saying this ClickFunnels will be able to offer like affiliate links or like, what are you, how's it going to be different? I'm just saying that's the reason that Shopify really exploded just on the backbone of this new age of creators. Whereas most creators are, they're, they're content creators. That's their life. That's their business. They don't, you know, they don't have like a business that they're funneling traffic to. They're making money. Like I just watched this video of this YouTuber at VidSummit interview all the top YouTubers and they're talking about how much money they made and all they were saying was their revenues from AdSense and merch and brand deals. They're not like us where they're selling memberships, courses, high ticket services, done for you, done with you services, where that's our business. Got you. Yeah. So we're business owners, business entrepreneurs, and we create content and run ads to fuel leads and sales into our business. They're content creators who make money in those different ways, have a side hustle or send traffic to physical product because that's how they can monetize their content. So Shopify was the platform of choice for a lot of these brands to leverage the influencers to send the traffic to because it's super simple to say, hey, I'm wearing this tank. I'm wearing this hoodie. If you want it, it's free or it's 20% off using my code, go here, right? Where I think a lot of people on the ClickFunnels space, because they haven't tapped into the e-commerce segment yet, it's a lot more expert-driven businesses, local businesses, expert-driven businesses that are trying to generate leads to get sales into their courses, memberships, high ticket programs, done for you services, as opposed to sending people to like a full product suite e-commerce store the way Shopify did. Yeah, that's a very interesting insight. So if, if ClickFunnels can now establish their own store, their own cart funnels, and people can leverage the same creator economy, influencer economy, but send that traffic there, there can instantly be a lot more businesses that are built on the backbone of the ClickFunnels e-commerce stores instead of just Shopify. Wow, you're right. ClickFunnels is not that big with the creator. Like I don't hear them kind of, you know, for example, sponsoring a lot of YouTubers, but Shopify is sponsoring a lot of YouTubers and they're very big into the creator space. Wow, it's very interesting. And because it's, they're going to start with the end in mind and keep their core principle of having a great user interface being really easy to use. I can see a lot of these influencers influencers coming on there for the first time and creating their own product or sourcing their own products, et cetera, because the website part that used to be harder, a little more complicated on Shopify, even if you are using a template, it's a lot more easily solvable. And or there are more businesses that could approach them to do shout outs, partnerships, JV relationships, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's going to be the affiliate stuff already built in. You don't got to go get a bunch of apps and stuff. Yeah, it's like exactly. If you're promoting the platform itself to your audience, you could be making affiliate income from that. It's way faster, way easier to use 100% interesting